What's going on guys? Reaper here. If this is your first tour, then welcome to Reaper's Papa Son Supply. However, if it's not your first tour, then welcome back to the NOM, baby. So, in this ruck mounting episode, we're going to be taking a look at a few different options on how to mount an Arvin rucksack to a lightweight frame. Now, there's two specific reasons I wanted to make this episode. Reason number one is I've had several guys off and on ask me if you can mount an Arvin rucksack to a lightweight frame. And the answer to that is, well, yes, of course you can. And we'll be covering all that in this video. Reason number two, which I'm sure you guys have already seen in the thumbnail or the video description, is the movie Forrest Gump. And if you've been in the collecting or reenacting world for a while, then you, like myself, also noticed one very specific thing from the Vietnam scenes. And that's Tom Hanks' character, Gump, is the one and only individual out of everybody in his unit that has a lightweight frame. And if you look real close, you'll notice that he's not using regular shoulder straps. In fact, he's got a set of M1956 H harness suspenders jerry-rigged to the frame. And you know, I've always found that to be really, really interesting and a little bit odd. But not super practical. But anyway, guys, I thought this video would be the perfect time for a little bit of experimentation, some education, and a bit of fun, or possibly lack thereof. Alright guys, so we get our introduction into Vietnam with Forrest and Bubba arriving with their unit of the 9th Infantry Division in the Mekong Delta area. Hey, I bet they shrimp all in these water. They tell me these Vietnams is good shrimp. After we win this war, we take over everything. A few minutes further into the Vietnam segment, we get our first real look at the equipment and rucksacks that the men in the unit are wearing. There must be some kind of way out of here. And right off the bat, we can see that anyone that is wearing a rucksack is wearing the Arvin rucksack. Hey, Tex. Hey, Tex. Man, what the hell's going on? And out of all of them, only one has a lightweight frame, and that's Forrest Gump's character. And it's really hard to miss because it's practically right in your face. And I've always found that really odd, but it's always intrigued me because I've always had the question in my mind of, is it the only one that they could find for production, or did they just throw it in there to kind of mix things up a bit? But if they had done that, then why don't we see one or two other lightweight frames on some of the other guys in the unit? If they only had one, I found it kind of odd to just throw that one frame in there. Uh, realistically, it would have been better to omit it than to just have the one singular frame. So the conclusion I pretty much came up to is it might have been a personal preference of Tom Hanks himself. He might have set up his rucksack himself, and that may be why we see it. But then again, there may be no answers to that at all. And those of us collectors and reenactors know that that's not quite accurate. Even a quick internet search will yield the 9th Infantry Division specifically and predominantly using the lightweight rucksack. While uncommon to see members of the U.S. Army using the Arvin rucksack, it's not completely unheard of, as there are several photos out there of various individuals and units using the Arvin rucksack. However, it was much more common to see the United States Marine Corps using the Arvin rucksack in mass, especially later in the war. Now I've got two lightweight frames, the Arvin rucksack, and of course a pair of M56 suspenders. Now the first thing we'll start with is the use of M56 suspenders being used as shoulder straps. In this scene we can clearly see that Forrest is using a second set of M56 suspenders for shoulder straps on his lightweight frame. Now I'm going to show you guys exactly how that was achieved. Now I'm using a pair of long suspenders, but in the film it's quite clear that Forrest Gump's character is using a set of extra long. And I'll explain how I know that. So in one particular scene we can actually see that the H harness straps are coming to the top of the frame here in the webbing loops and then actually coming in at an angle like so. And you're probably thinking that those straps are just attached to the center bar here. However, on closer inspection, that's not quite true. This is actually where they attach. So in the scene where Gump hits the deck during the ambush, we see his rook get flipped up and back. This is where we can see that the actual straps for the H harness come all the way down 
and wrap around the lower waist or kidney support strap. So they actually come down and around and they tie it here, which is kind of odd. I don't know why they didn't just use the center bar like we're going to in this video. Now to use a pair of M56 suspenders, you'll first have to remove the mounting hardware off of the rear straps so that they can weave through the mounting loops on top of the frame. Now the other reason I know that a set of extra long suspenders is being used is how they have the front straps from the harness attached to the rucksack. Now this is one of those if you're not looking for it and you blink, you're definitely going to miss it moments. So we can see in this one scene that he still has the front mounting hardware attached to the straps. And the only thing that I could come up with is how this was actually attached to the frame was that it come through this area here where you normally add your normal strap and attaches to this little vertical bar here for your waist support strap. So the buckle actually comes through and then right here where it's the thinnest, where it's a little bit crimped, that little hook there comes and attaches to that point and then back through. And that's pretty clever. However, if you're a tall guy or a kind of broad guy, then using size regular or even long just isn't going to give you enough room to be able to wear the actual rucksack without it really digging in and just being too tight. And even though Tom Hanks isn't relatively a large size guy, he would still, in his own respects, have to use a size extra long, especially with all the gear and how loose his setup really is. All right, let's mount the ruck to the frame. Just like the Gump configuration, we'll be using the top horizontal strap and utilizing the original shoulder straps on the Arvin rucksack. What you want to do is run your shoulder straps to the Arvin rucksack over the top of your horizontal strap, bringing it back through and around. Now the way that this was done in the film is these straps here were cinched all the way down and then run back down here to your little D-ring. Now you can run these straps anywhere you like or just tie them off. Now you're going to need a couple of equipment straps. Unfortunately most Arvin Rucks don't have or they're missing these straps. But don't worry, you don't necessarily need them. Because you can just use paracord. Now that we got our equipment strap and or paracord, we're just going to go ahead and loop around. Now you can see why a little earlier in the video I mentioned you'd probably need a set of extra long. That's because there's very little room using a set of long straps. Now I don't have my standard gear and regular H harness on under this, so I have a little bit of room. It doesn't seem too bad right now. However, if I did have the rest of my gear on, I'd have absolutely no room, and trying to get out of this thing in a hurry is just not going to happen. Now the other thing to note is I don't have this pack loaded. There's no weight. But if I did have it loaded and packed up, kind of like you see Gump in the movie, with everything he has packed on there, you can see that the ruck and frame sits down way lower. So, you know, I think he had a law rocket, PRC battery, poncho, poncho liner, sea rats, smoke grenades. So the problem with that is once you get it all loaded down, the way that these straps have to weave through that top part or the top bar, you'll wind up having the top part of this frame dig into the back of your shoulder or shoulder blades. And honestly, that's going to get real old real quick. Okay guys, I've got to come clean with you. This isn't the first time I've run a ruck set up in the Gump configuration. I did this several years ago back when I saw the movie and not for the lack of having a proper lightweight rucksack or rucksack bag, but 
just because I wanted to try it out. I thought it was neat and ran it for a little while. However, this is the first time running the M56 suspenders, and to be honest with you guys, it sucks. I wouldn't do it. Now I viewed, reviewed, viewed again, paused, rewound, screenshotted, and zoomed in. I probably over obsessed on this setup a little more than I should have, but at the very least, I got the answers I was looking for. Now that we've gone over the gump configuration, let's go over a few other more practical mounting options. Option number one, just like the gump configuration, we're going to be utilizing and using this top horizontal strap and the standard lightweight shoulder straps as well. Now, instead of cinching these straps up and going straight to the corners of the ruck, we're instead going to go down and around the bottom bar, lock it into the corners of the ruck, and then tighten. This makes the ruck much more stable and secure to the actual lightweight frame and of course you can use the shoulder straps from the Arvin rucksack as extra padding against the back. Once you've done that you can go ahead and wrap your equipment strap and or paracord. You can also add paracord or equipment straps to the top for better stabilization. Now if you don't want your ruck sitting this low or even on the horizontal strap there's a way to go ahead and bring this rucksack up higher and almost even with this top bar. Now for option number two, it'd be a lot easier if your Arvin rucksack still has the X-frame. However, if it doesn't, no big deal guys, we can still go ahead and mount it higher up on the frame. So what we're going to want to do is get a couple strands of paracord, and in each corner of this X-frame in the top here, we're going to run a strand of paracord. Now that we've done that, we're going to take our lightweight frame and place it about where we think we want this rucksack to sit. And then we're going to take our paracord and we're going to tie it to the top bar. Now to make sure that this rucksack doesn't slip one way or the other, we can actually run it through these top loops here and here. Now by attaching the rucksack this way, we can actually utilize and use the shoulder straps from the Arvin rucksack if we really wanted to. If not, just tuck them underneath and come back through and again you can also use this horizontal strap or if you don't have a strap you can actually just kind of run things down and back around and hook it up like in option number one now with our straps run back underneath same principle applies you can come back around and just clip them back into place in each corner of the ruck and cinch your straps and of course like before run your equipment straps or paracord around the sides. Now another option, if your ruck does have the X-frame and all of the straps that it's supposed to have, such as your vertical straps, you can actually undo these straps and run them on your horizontal strap on the frame. That will also give you the same height as using paracord. Now if your ruck no longer has the X-frame, but you still want to mount it higher up, all you need to do is run some straps or some paracord through your upper webbing loops here and attach it in the same manner as you would have essentially with the X-frame on. Now doing this, you're gonna have to come over and go through your upper webbing loops. Now, of course, the downside to doing this is it puts a lot of stress and strain on your webbing loops here on the side of your rook and have potential to tear out. So our next option with that is to run paracord up under the shoulder straps of the Arvin rook and then tie it to the frame. Now once you've done that, again, run your shoulder straps from your Arvin all the way down and around the bottom bar, hooking back into the corners of the rucksack. And then by doing that, you eliminate slippage from your shoulder straps. And then of course, also run your side straps and or paracord. All right, now that we've gone over some of the options on how to mount an Arvin rucksack to a lightweight frame, let's address the elephant in the room. This video is purely made for entertainment and educational purposes only. However, there's that question of should I or can I use this setup for my impression or reenacting? Well, that's kind of a gray area. You see, this comes down to two very important things. Now, there's no doubt in my mind that all the years and all the men that served in Vietnam, someone at some time set up the ruck in one of these configurations. Now, number one, What's the time frame and unit you're portraying or trying to portray? Because that unit wasn't known for using Arvin rucksacks or a mix match of other rucksacks, then the answer to your question is no, you probably shouldn't set your ruck up in this configuration. However, if the answer is yes and you want to set your ruck up like this, then I 
don't see why you couldn't kind of get by with it. Now number two. This is ultimately going to fall in the hands of Vietnam reenacting unit that you're a part of and or if you're not a part of a unit, whatever unit you're going to be falling in line with at whatever event. As they have the final say on whether you're good to go or not. And trust me guys, I totally understand availability and cost. Sometimes you just got to use kind of what you have and get by with what you have, at least within reason. Especially if you're fairly new to the hobby. Personally, I really don't have a big issue with that. However, don't turn that into an ongoing excuse for not getting the proper gear, equipment, uniforms, whatever, including your rucksack, because your rucksack is one of the most important parts of your impression. For example, don't be the guy that gets the temporary slide by that two, three, four years down the road, you're using the same excuse that can't afford it or you can't find it but then you've bought hundreds or thousands of dollars worth of other things for your impression that really just aren't pertinent trust me that's one of the quickest ways to get on the bad side of a lot of guys in this hobby because at some point in time they're just gonna throw their hands up quit or they're, they're gonna stop trying to help you there's a lot of guys out there with a lot of extra gear equipment rucksacks stuff like that that are more than happy to lend it to you and help you kind of get it right until you can afford or gather up the stuff that you need especially if you're serious about it so if you're serious about it put in that time and effort to get the right stuff the right gear the right equipment the right uniform anyway guys i hope you enjoyed this episode and if you would like to see any more gear or uniform breakdown videos from vietnam war films let's be sure to let me know in the comments below and i've got Got some more ruck mounting episodes coming out in the very near future but until then guys remember stay frosty and i'll see you on your next tour